Hey everyone! Okay, I'm going to do an updated packaging video. Um, the last one I did, um, not much has changed, but I think the focus was a bit naff on my old camera, so we've got a nice new snazzy camera we'll use for this one. Um, so I still use the paper, but this time, just pull that apart, I've got um, some new paper made up which has little. Um, top hats so rather than my usual boot I've used top hats so that's the beauty part of creating your own packaging and own labels is that you can pretty much use whatever you want so I like to go down the Victorian route that's where sort of you know the basis of my branding is so there's loads and loads of different sort of characters and sort of logos and icons you can use so this time I went for top hats so I get this printed with a local printer um, and also I'm still using my brown labels so I just buy these in bulk from flexi labels here in the UK and you just have to make sure that you have got the right size for your bars so obviously you're going to measure the bars all the way around the circumference so that you make sure you have enough labelage <laughs> to go around your bars of soap so this is the finished product so I've got all my information there and my wax seal. So I use a glue gun with wax seal sticks, which I buy from a company called Manuscript. And I buy boxes of them at a time. So there's loads, there's like layers in there. I think you get about 70, uh, about 72 or something in a box. They're not cheap, but that's what I use because I like it. And then I had my wax stamp made for me on eBay. So, labelling in the UK, I'll go briefly over what we have to do. Okay, so some of this on mine is by choice and I will just tell you a few bits and pieces that you need to know if you're UK based. So I put my scent notes on each, of, each sort of label because when people get it in the post, they like to read what the description of the scent is and then it sort of gives them like a feel of, you know, the soap and the vibe that I'm going for. And so I like to explain what I, I'm telling them it smells like. So they've got this nice idea in their heads of what I am trying to portray with a scent. Also, do a close up there, the ingredients list. Now, this has to be done in order of appearance. So each ingredient in order of appearance and also the finished ingredient. So we we can't use saponified oils of, and then olive oil, palm oil, coconut oil, whatever. We have to use the finished salt name, which is sodium cocoate. So when you make soap, it um, changes and becomes a salt, which is why it's called sodium something. So I use sodium cocoate, sodium palmate. This is just my ingredients list, sodium olive 8, sun, sodium sal, sunflower 8, aqua is the water content, glycerin is naturally present in the finished soap, in mine it's at 7.99%, um, sodium cocoa butter 8, which is my super fat, parfum for fragrance, now if you're using essential oils then you would have to use the INCI name, which is the International Nomenclature Cos... hang on, cosmetic ingredient yeah international nomenclature in cosmetic ingredients so it's a worldwide language basically in latin that um we use all across the world to distinguish one ingredient from another so let's take um orange oil so you can't put essential oil of like or orange essential oil you have to use citrus sinensis peel oil or some other ones like patchouli is pogo stemmen, cablin leaf oil, uh, geranium is pelagonium graviolans leaf oil. So you have to use that INCI name. Um, this one, it doesn't have any on there because I'm not using, oh there's chondrus crispus, that yeah, it's got, I put seaweed on top of this soup, so it's got chondrus crispus extract. So you couldn't just put seaweed, or this one, in this case, it was like Irish moss. If you saw me make this old seaside town soap, it was Irish moss I used. So you have to put the Latin name so that everybody in the world knows exactly what that ingredient is. And then at the end, you, ha you also have to list all of the allergens. So in soap, 
or wash off products rather, if the allergen is calculated at more than 0.01%, then it must be listed on the label. And if it is on, um, if it is included in any product which is a leave-on product, it must be on the label if it goes above 0.001, since it's going to be left on the body. So all of that has to be done before you even put that label on that bar of soap. You have to, you know, obviously in your product information file, that's part of what you have to do is get all of that information and um, then we have to upload all that information to the UK portal so that there is a, a file that if anybody needs to refer to it you've got every single bit of information that is needed including those allergens if anybody has a reaction. It's, it's a lot of work, it's like people think oh a lovely soap company you can just set up a soap company, it ain't that easy. It's, I've mentioned a lot of this in the CPSR video that I've done. So, you know, we have to have a chemist to assess our products and that kind of thing. So the labeling comes into this. So I'm just mentioning it because it is a really, really relevant part of the information for your labeling. It absolutely has to be right. Also, if you want to use a weight on your soap, so I will use, my bars are about five ounces um, and Obviously with our system, we have to put it in grams. So mine are about 140 grams. And I use the E symbol and the net weight because I use trade approved scales. Now, if you don't have trade approved scales, you can't put the weight of your product or use the weights and measures thing. You would put um, not less than on your soap packaging, but I like to have the exact. So it does allow you to go over by a few grams, but you're not allowed to go under. So the net weight, it can just go slightly over. So I just have to make sure that I get that correct before I package these as well. So it's exhausting, isn't it? It's a lot of work that people don't realise. It's like all of the stuff that goes on in the background. It's like people, they sometimes wonder where you've gone. And I sort of think, if only you knew what I was doing in the background, what I have to do to get everything in order so that if I ever got checked or, you know, anybody ever had an issue with my product, I've got everything in place. So it's a lot of work. Okay, so yeah, it's not just let's label and package our soaps. So for my packaging, I use um, Publisher, I use Adobe InDesign, and I will get more into that as the video goes along, and I will show you how I do all this stuff. Okay. Okay, so I've got my cutter ready, and I just make sure that this is all in place. And I, you can only sort of cut a few at a time, so I don't know, there's probably about six sheets there, something like that. So I put it through and halfway on these is 15 centimeters across here. So just line that up on both ends and close your ears. This is not a nice sound. I'm trying, actually, if I do it slow, it's not too bad. So I just go through once like that and then I will fold just slightly. So I've got a crease mark on there. Right, so I know where to put it when I cut this way. So it goes back in, there's my fold, follow that along the line of the cutter and cut down. And then I have two lots, so there's more. So when I'm having to package loads of soaps, I like to get loads of these ready. Just makes life a lot easier. And that can happen sometimes too. It goes off. This cut is not the best. There we go. And I'll just ruin there. Just trim off those off the end. Otherwise, we'll end up with a mess. There we go. Okay. Just trim that in the bin. Okay, pop that away. Okay, so just for purposes of the video, I'm just going to show you how I would wrap the bars. Let's bring you in. So I just place it in the center and I use a prick stick to just glue down rather than using tape. So this is quite a high bar. I should have maybe cut those. Actually, that's fine. Okay, so I don't tape in or stick in the end pieces because the label will do that because they're sticky labels. So I'm just going to show you how I would start off these and I pile them up and then get the labels ready to just stick round before I put the wax seal on the end. Thank you. 
pile up the whole batch before doing the label. So I'll just get these four down just for just for just for. So this is just a way of doing it with paper and cigar bands. You can use cardboard cigar bands and use something else to secure them. You can use whichever, whatever you like. There's also the um, cellophane wrappers you can use, but you know if you don't want to use the uh, plastics, but you can get biodegradable ones. But I just prefer to use paper. But you, I, I do like the way that they look when they're packaged all neatly and lined up when they're all done with the cellophane wrappers. I do actually quite like that. So that's that. Just leave those to the side and I'll show you then the next bit. So I'm actually wrapping Old Seaside Town at the moment. So here's my labels on my sheets. And to get these lined up, you would take a soap that's not packaged. And I normally would take like a blank label and I would wrap it. I'll do it with one that's printed, I can use it anyway. So I would normally like take it and sort of, you know, you can work out what, how much you want to be left on the side, how much then if you do this, mark it, then you would use a ruler, which I've got here, and then you'd measure how many centimeters across, that's eight and a half, and then going round the bend, <laughs> across there, there's my read all about it. And across there, go from the very edge, that's about, mm, it's about, and it's just over an inch, but I would probably put in a, a few more millimeters just because sometimes you might have some variances in um, the size. And then again, you're obviously going to want to use eight and a half again across the back. And then what's left, obviously, is going to be what you fold in. So measuring is just a bit of trial and error. So you make sure that your label, first of all, is going to fit your size bar. And the company that I buy from are called um, Flexi Labels, and they do all kinds of different sizes. So I just make sure that it's going to fit. And then when I get the label, obviously, yeah, just a bit of trial and error and mess about with it until you've got it sort of bang on in centre. Because there's nothing worse than something being off centre in my head. I can't stand it if it's sort of off. <laughs> and a lot of people can't stand it. <laughs> it's just nice to have everything marked so everything is central. There, like that, and then like that. That's a little bit still could come back a couple of millimeters over this side but it's not too bad <laughs> generally you know you keep into the same size soaps once you've done that bit then it's easy peasy and i do find using the sticky labels is so much easier than card i did used to use card and i get the card printed with the printer but you know trying to get it to seal. I used to use double-sided sticky tape and it's it never looks good if you use a seller tape or even like the, the nice invisible tape. It just doesn't look good if you're trying to stick down a label with seller tape. Don't do that. It just doesn't look good at all. I would always suggest to use sticky labels. But if you're going to use card then find a way where you disguise that seal because otherwise it's just going to look naff, you know. I know it's handmade and not homemade, but handmade, but you don't want it to look trashy, you know? So no sellotape. <laughs> okay, so now I've got them all upright and my glue gun is ready. And I'm just gonna put a little blob on each one and then use the wax seal. So I just normally would do four at a time. And like the last video, if your wax well, you might not use these, but if you do use them, they do heat up. Like this metal bit will heat up quite quickly, so you could have a little bowl of water and a bit of tissue paper at the side just to um, cool it off between stamping this wax, otherwise it can get stuck. So these, this dries pretty fast, but they do look really, really nice, and especially when they're all lined up on a shelf. 
you can see so on the shelf it you know normally i've got masses of them so they do look really really good so it's just a very simple once you've got it in place it's in place it's a really nice way of packaging your soaps um i'll just do a few more and i'm done with this batch and i can move on to the next so it's very time consuming once you start out you know deciding how you want to package and then you know going to actually going about it and decide designing your labels you can use photoshop you can use different applications on microsoft office you can do whatever you like i tend to use publisher just for my soap labels because it's a really easy app to use just for soap labels it's i really like it i also use adobe indesign and i sometimes have used photoshop but i'm not it's not what I always use, so I'm not massively familiar with doing labels on Photoshop. Some people are, some people aren't, but I'm not one of them. So I do like to use InDesign, which is Adobe InDesign, a lot for my labels because then you get all of the um, text glyphs and, you know, certain um, fonts come with sort of different little pictures and things like that, which are really useful when designing your label so they like have flourishes or sort of um you know capital letters lowercase letters and accented letters and also i get lots and lots of characters in mine so the font i use has like victorian people like characters so indesign is really good the only thing with any microsoft um application is you won't get the glyphs and the glyphs are all those little characters that you get in um fonts but the more you learn about using fonts, you'll, you'll get into all of this sort of thing. So, yeah, a glyph would sort of um, change this O. You could have like a flourish on the O or, you know, make it look a little bit more fancy. Let me find something for you and I'll show you what I mean. OK, so here's a perfume label for one of my boxes. So the F, for instance, here has that's a that's like where I'm using glyphs so the F has got sort of like a bit more of a curly sort of thing here the eau de parfum so the duh we're going eau de parfum that D there has a little flourish going across that so that comes in the glyph area when you're using Adobe applications but you won't get that in Microsoft so I'm just making you aware also at the side of perfumery there's two little flourishes look so you won't get those kind of things in the Microsoft apps, which is a shame, but you just don't get them. There's also, I'll show you another one. So Arabian Nights perfume oil here. On the A, we've got a nice sort of curly tail on there. And the O, hopefully that can pick it up. It's sort of got a nice sort of like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It just looks a lot nicer. And you can mess about with all kinds of things like that in those Adobe apps. So, it depends on your budget and it depends on what you want, but um, that's a basic, this is just like a basic label that I use Publisher for, for my soap. But yeah, for the more fancy things, I do tend to use Adobe. So I'm sorry for waffling on, but you know, there's lots of information. But anything you want to know, try, you know, so leave me a comment below and I'll try and answer as many as possible in another video maybe or something like that, or maybe show you how that's done on the app. So I will see you later. Ta-ta.